Welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Wendy, an ophthalmologist no longer based in Kuching, but still a mother of three. This episode is the one that you guys have been asking me about. So I'm very excited to have finally got the time to sit down and prepare this video for you all. And if you find it valuable, please, please, please remember to subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to follow me on my Instagram handle, which I'm gonna link it up here, you will find much more inspiration to becoming a working mother, to becoming a working doctor. I hope we can together inspire each other to keep moving forward. So now disclaimer, I'm a master student who have never taken her FRC of of Tao examination paper before. But I do believe that this book recommendation will apply to master la, FRC la, whatever external paper that you want to do because the scopes are the same, the Oftal syllabus will be the same worldwide, the information, the knowledge will be the same. So all these books will be your basic references. Oh so, yep. So as usual, this will be a very super super detailed video. Just like my other video, I'll prepare a summary at the end of this video which you can screenshot if you want to. If you want to download it, head over to my blog which I will prepare a PDF for you to do so. This is seriously the most 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 requested video because this is so I love mom, so this is a love story lah with ophthalmology. If you are just a freshly graduate house officer and you just joined the uh, ophthalmology department, so you are basically still in the friend zone stage. Friendly level with ophthalmology field. You have no idea what ophthalmology is all about. You have not been exposed to any ophthalmology knowledge except for your undergraduates ones, which is like and you probably only heard about conjunctivitis which is red eye and cataract and that's about it or maybe glaucoma if you're a little bit more advanced if you're at this friend zone stage the books that i will recommend you to read are clinical anatomy of the eye by snell is one of the best 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 and number one book that i will recommend you to read because i really find this book very good anatomy can always be a very dry topic but in this book some parts of it they have very nice illustration that can help you imagine how is it like in the eye and to help make sense of things i think this book is a very excellent book for beginner it maps all the anatomy well it's very easy to follow and it covers majority i think i would say 80 to 90 percent of all the anatomy that you would ever need to know in your lifetime <laughs> and what i love is that at, at the end of every chapter there is a part where basic applied clinical anatomy you know like when cutting at this area it causes less bleeding because there's no blood vessels there further enhancement of your clinical anatomy knowledge so the first time, breathe through it. The second time, make notes out, out of it. The third time and the fourth is for revision. And for me, I will feel, I feel that it is a very good book for beginners as well as for revision. Oxford Handbook. This is definitely good for on-calls. It is good for quick references when you are asked during board round and you need to refer it quickly for answers. <laughs> Because it is short, compact and very precise to that particular topic that you are interested in. The more you refer to it, the more you will find it helpful. But the downside to it is that it is not very detailed. So if you do not have a basic understanding, you will probably just spill out words that you don't really understand. And so you have a little bit of interest in ophthalmology and you would like to find out if we have a compatible with each other. So if you are in your year two in the ophthalmology department and you are thinking about applying to the master of ophthalmology well you are still flirting with ophthalmology you are still at the puppy stage level in ophthalmology if you would like to know how you can become an ophthalmologist in malaysia via the external paper or the frc of the paper comparing both of them to help you decide which pathway you want to be. So in this puppy love stage of ophthalmology doctor that you are, these are the books that I would recommend. Definitely Kansky. So what I really love about, about this book is that it is very colorful, it is very well illustrated. They describe all the important pertinent things that you need to recognize and you need to know when you are seeing a particular part of the eye when i was an ophthalmology medical officer i got the fourth edition and when i became a master student i bought the sixth 
edition of Khan Scheme. So, buy the latest version lah, huh? It is a super, super big, heavy book. So, regard this as a textbook. Your very first textbook of ophthalmology. Basic, you need to be exposed to all these basic pictures first because the eye can't see what the brain doesn't know. This is the best textbook to first look at pictures before you go and see the patient so that you are able to recognize it when you are looking at the patient at the sleep lamp. And the second book in this stage that I will recommend is, of course, Tianning Mong. I call it Tianning Mong, but I believe his real name is Wong Tianning because <laughs> Wong being the last name, so they put it behind. But never mind. I like to call it Tianning Wong books. I love, love this book because it is very simple. It is as though this author, Tianning Wong, who, who is a real ophthalmology now, he's one of the medical retina boss in uh, Singapore right now. Lah. It, it is like his own notes that he made it into somehow compile it into a book to share it with everybody. It is uh, very easy to understand, very easy to follow. Everything is in a short form, bulleted form. For certain diseases, he even prepared a table to help to compare certain clinical characteristics, how to differentiate them. He has also uh, put in those uh, medical mnemonics that can help you remember things better. That is very good for revision. All the answers that your specialists and consultants will want to hear are all contained in this book. This book has all the keywords, all the key points, and all the everything that can help you pass an exam easily and things like that. So I really, 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 really enjoy this book. This is a very important book, but of course it is not the only book that you should rely on because, because you still need to go through your textbook to really understand the disease battle physiology properly and in depth. So when you are already at the stage where you want to write, you want you feel like you uh, start writing your own notes, this is the book where you can refer to and follow its his style of uh, making notes. And if you guys want to know how I make notes and how I study for either my master or my currently now subspecialty, leave it in the comments down below. I may consider making a video on it. For deep understanding and deep learning, you need to use Kansky, which is a textbook to go hand in hand with Oxford. And for revision, once you have gone through all the basic theories in the eye, Tianin Wong and Oswald Handbook goes very well hand in hand for your revision period. And so if you are just enrolled in your first year master program, congratulations, you are now in the dating stage <laughs> with ophthalmology. So you are now stepping out of the friend zone and getting ready to be committed in a one-to-one -one exclusive relationship with ophthalmology that you're no longer thinking of a pediatric medical, surgical, ONG, no more, no more. Decided that you want to be committed to ophthalmology, here we go. The first book in this stage that I will recommend is definitely AAO books, American Academy of Ophthalmology books. So the AAO Basic and Clinical Sciences editions, they are a series of books that cover all the uh, basic topics in ophthalmology. They, so they have the full range of it. Cornea, oculoplastic, medical retina, uveitis, vitro retina, glaucoma. You go in further and get even more committed to ophthalmology. So if you are in your first year of master student, you will only need to read the first chapter of all these books lah, for the basic anatomy as well as their physiology knowledge. But if you are already in your clinical years, then you have to read the whole damn book. Lah. Uh -oh. This is a very heavy topic. You don't have to read word by word. Listen during work rounds or even during your lectures. The things that keep coming out, those are the things that are important. Go back to these books. Only focus on all these uh, topics. Extract them, make it into your own personal notes for your own personal reference in the future. Lah. If you are in the dating stage with ophthalmology, you have to focus on optics uh, already. What I would recommend is Elkington. This is the book that I use. It's very dry. I've gone through the books like three or four times already in my lifetime and uh, I cannot remember anything now. <laughs> because it's very physics and if you like those kind of things, you will probably enjoy optics but I don't. I cannot. It is okay for me to forget at my stage now but for you, you absolutely, absolutely have to the best is to understand, but you can't understand, memorize. Memorize all the key points or the keywords that you're supposed to write for you to pass your examination. Because if you fail your optics, you will fail the entire exam. And if you'd like to know how are the exams in Master of Ophthalmology like, 
that's a video for you so i really advise you to start reading this book early when you're in your you're probably in your third month of your first year master of ophthalmology and keep going back to it whenever you have time because this is really very dry and you really need time to really understand what 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 is the physics behind optics for me i personally read through it cover to cover not less than three times to help me pass my first year master exam the next book that i'm gonna recommend john forrester the eye or the uh, basic sciences to practice so this is again a very heavy book it's a very dry book it's not a very easy book to digest it is also a very expensive book so they use all the very long very lengthy very difficult to understand of science words because definitely you cannot be reading word by word or chapter by chapter otherwise you will be too consumed with it i don't think you can finish it in time pick a topic of your interest for example is why is cornea transparent there are many points to this uh, question and there are two important theories that you can definitely find answers in this textbook study smart lah study smart so there, there is a chapter on optics as well in john forrester if i remember correctly and i think it supplements the alkytum very well in regards to optic topics ground and pull out the ring and say marry me juliet you never have to be alone if you are in this stage definitely you're in the married stage with ophthalmology lah you sign the contract you say i do and we say welcome <laughs> I'll come to the fraternity so basically if you're in your clinical years whether you're in master program or in parallel pathway well i would say that you are in this stage already lah you're married to ophthalmology <laughs> there's no way out of it so in this stage what resources and what books that you should be using all of above so even though you're married you still need to have some date nights for you and your partners right to keep the sparks going so even though you have gone through all those books you still need to frequently and regularly go back to all these for revision and references yes you need to repeat and revise every single thing the only difference in this stage is that you can safely forget about those basics anatomy basic sciences physiology basic pathology and and even optics oh my goodness it's good to leave optics behind and purely focus on clinical clinical diseases diagnosis and treatments these are the fun part of ophthalmology because everything that you ever read in the book now you get to apply them clinically when you see real patient in real life and that is what makes it so much more interesting so books may not be enough at this stage you may need to you definitely not may like you have to sign up for uh local conferences hands-on courses national conferences as well for better exposure and understanding in the field of ophthalmology and the last few resources in this stage is definitely our local cpg our clinical practice guideline there are only a few in malaysia and you definitely need to read it and know them in and out because those are the hallmark the guidance of our clinical practice in malaysia lah. so if you are practicing in malaysia definitely you need to know lah. it's free for download lah, so don't worry and so with that good luck for your clinical examination some people may progress to another stage to the stage where i am currently at now so if you are new here my name is dr wendy and i'm a sub specialist in medical retina and uveitis currently in my first year of fellowship and uh, i'm at a stage where i'm not only married to ophthalmology i decided to build a family and have children with ophthalmology so this is probably the last stage of ophthalmology so i'm referring to the sub specialty program lah. if you are in this program where books no longer serve you well at this stage as what i think again this video is what everything what i think like. so if you're in this stage there are no books to share but i will share with you what i am using as my resources in my current journey right now so number one is definitely i'm learning from my consultants and i am learning through their experience through their expertise their academic and clinical experience is absolutely invaluable so i will usually when i consult them i will ask the right question i would say and then we can have a very healthy professional discussion about the patient number two is i read from medical journals case reports publication new papers uh, in contrast with master level i'm seeing all the more complicated cases difficult to manage 
all those difficult to diagnose patients. In master level, we learn the common things first. Whereas in this current level, I am training myself to think out of the box already. And number three, I'm learning from international platforms and getting inspiration and motivation from international speakers, overseas experts, international conferences. I am hoping to improve our local services. So what we are doing now is good, but sometimes you need to Sometimes it cannot be cut out still below the tempurong lah. You have to go out and see what other people are using, what investigation are they doing so that we can improve our own uh, services. So for that to happen, we need to be humble enough to continue to learn. And people are using biologics like crazy, so this is something that I want to be learning for myself and for the local services as well. So the world is shifting and improving and progressing whether you like it or not. So it's either you go with the flow. If you are not up to date, you will be really ketinggalan zaman lah, I would say. <laughs> Number four ways to learn is learn by teaching others. I feel that this is very important because it means that you yourself have a very good basic understanding already that you are able to teach people. If you're just memorizing the reading from textbook, that is not teaching, that is just just spewing irrelevant words that you may not understand as well. So if you're able to teach people and they understand what you're teaching. So there are loads of information, loads of resources out there, the free resources that you can get from online websites nowadays. But if you feel like you're struggling or you don't have time to read and you need help in understanding certain diseases, I'm actually offering to be your online tutor, tuition teacher at a fee. So if you're interested, head over to my blog, post additional information there. I will be happy to help you. And the fifth and the final thing that you ought to be doing at this stage, I feel that is to inspire other juniors to join you in your medical career. Why? So why I think this is one of the most important thing to do at this stage, in my stage, is that in order to continue to do what you love to do, you can't do it alone for a long period of time. You get exhausted, you get burnt out, you need balance in life. A functional team at work so that we can all go back and not think about work because we are all so well oiled <laughs> and still have that healthy boundaries like, between work and life and family. Some dinosaur doctors and consultants will think that wow, the more younger people join me, the more competition that I have. But if you're good enough, nobody can replace you. If you're a true expert, you will not be afraid for other people to join you because you will always have something new to teach them. Uh, if you stop learning, then that is when you are afraid that people may take over you, replace you. So whether you are in the friend zone, puppy love zone, dating zone, marriage zone, or if you are currently in my stage, and I hope you are able to progress up to my stage, to the build a family stage. I hope that you find this video helpful and valuable to you as usual. Thank you so much for watching. And if you need a tutor for clinical ophthalmology, Remember to check out my blog in the description down below. All the best in your journey and I will see you in the next video. Bye!